Chapter two, the ASCA National Model, a model for um, developmental school counseling programs. In 1997, um, ASCA or the American School Counselor Association published the National Standards for School Counseling Programs. And this, um, these standards actually provided um, a standardized set of um, standards. There were nine altogether. Uh, for school counselors in terms of creating, um, developing their comprehensive developmental school counseling programs. So these counseling school, their counseling programs, um, comprehensive in nature, developmental as well to address the different um, ages as well as the different developmental levels expected um, for the P-12. Um, students. So it was given to address um, from um, preschool all the way to 12th grade, but in um, school developmental stages. And then again in 2014, ASCA then published um, mindsets and behaviors that were based on research from University of Chicago, um, looking at 35 standards, so it moves moved from nine standards to 35 standards. However, um, those standards always address academic, career, and social emotional development of students. Um, so they were grouped in what's called domain, um, especially with the 1997 standards. Uh, 35 the 35 ask uh, mindsets and behaviors while not specifically grouped in those three domains of academic, career, and social-emotional development, um, they still address those three broad areas um, that school counselors are um, expected to, um, to work with students in those areas. The standards also further organize into mindsets um, ca um, standard categories and then behavior standards categories um, and the behavior standard, um, standards category was um, grouped according to learning strategies, self-management skills, as well as social skills. The mindsets and behaviors, um, there are six mindsets, um, standards, and the remaining are the behavior standards with 10 being learning strategies, 10 self-management skills, and nine um, social skills. You'll find the mindsets and behaviors on uh, the course website in Canvas, so feel free to look at those. And it's also in your, um, in your ASCA um, National Model textbook. Um, some of you may have the green one, the ASCA National Model um, a framework for school counseling programs. You may have this green one. Um, some of you may have the new, um, the newly published one, which is the red one. It's the fourth edition. The green is the third edition and the red is the fourth edition. Uh, the fourth edition was rolled out last, um, last year, June at the ASCA, at ASCA um, conference in, in Boston. Um, and since the model is, has some changes to it, um, all schools across the country were given a year to slowly move into the new model. So if you have the green book, it's okay for now, but I would strongly suggest you get the red one, um, the fourth edition, because that's the one that's gonna be used. And it's gonna be around for a while, so, if you can get the green change um, to the red, then that would be great. Getting back to the national model, the ASCA national model, these standards were really um, important for school counselors to look at, especially as they plan and they develop um, classroom guidance or large group guidance lessons, as well as they take care of what's called responsive services. And those responsive services include the individual counseling, um, the small group counseling, um, responding to a need that's present within the school. So um, to expand and integrate on the ASCA national um, standards, 
into a comprehensive framework. Um, and this framework uh, addresses the how, how school counselors are supposed to develop their program. And that's, that's why um, you have this textbook to tell you how. First, it tells you what it is that you're doing as a school counselor in developing your model. Um, but the framework actually tells you how to take those standards uh, from the mindsets and behaviors and develop those into a comprehensive program. School counselors are encouraged to switch from the traditional focus uh, on services for some students, that is those who needed the school um, counselor um, in terms of on the lower end where they may be the troublemakers, they may be the ones who problems come to school, um, they may be the ones who uh, school counselors refer to as frequent flyers, that is they're always um, in the counseling office for some issue or the other, or those who know they're on their way to college um, and need the school counselor in terms of direction on which college to go to, how to apply, and all of uh, and anything related to um, the college going or even finding a job. But you had, and and those comprise of about twenty percent, ten percent on the low end, ten percent on the upper end. You had about eighty percent that didn't really have a great need for the school counselor in terms of they they weren't troublemakers, they didn't get in trouble. Um, they weren't sure if they were going to college or they weren't sure if their parents had money for them to go to college. So the counselors didn't focus on them. But this model changed from where the focus used to be on some students to now where the focus has no other choice but to be on all students, every student um, in the school and by extension their families as well as the community um, as a focus. There are four core elements um, in, the, in the model and uh, under the third edition, those four core elements that, that you will find will be the foundation, um, the delivery, the management and accountability system. However, with this new model, they have since changed to different names, but still the same focus, the same um, um, requirements. And so those have since changed to the define system, the manage system, deliver system, and the assess system. All important role that the school counselor um, must take on in terms of developing a comprehensive model. Within those four um, elements, four core elements, there are four infused themes that include the school counselor and the role of leadership, advocacy, systemic change, and collaboration and teaming. So leadership in terms of taking a leadership role, understanding the role of school counselor within the school and leading and guiding a comprehensive um, program, Advocacy, understanding that um, there are times when the school counselor is going to have to speak up, not just for his or herself in the role of the school counselor and what their uh, responsibilities entail, but also understanding that sometimes students don't have a voice or they don't know that they have a voice and the school counselor may have to become the voice for that student or become the voice for the for the families for the parents until they've taught them how to be an advocate for themselves and then a systemic change um, looking at systemic change where school counselors take on the role of being a systemic change agent um, in terms of understanding that in order for them to do their job successfully and to meet the needs of all students, that um, they have to view the school as a part of a system. Uh, and so when issues come up, you look at the system instead of the individual student, but let's see if this is a, a systemic issue. And if it is, then it means that the system has to change somewhere, somehow. So always having a view of their role within the system. And then the uh, fourth theme is counselor in the role of collaboration and teaming, understanding that 
in order to be successful in uh, their job, they cannot um, do it alone that they are part of a team and they have to learn how to be a team member, how to be a team player, and they have to learn how to collaborate with others. Um, so they're not all gonna take, um, they're not gonna be able to do the job successfully well if it's just one person or only the school counselors. That the school counselors, in order to reach students, gonna have to team up with classroom um, teachers, gonna need to team up with administrators, gonna need to team up with the school nurse, gonna need to team up with coaches, gonna need to team up with parents, and also gonna need to team up with members in the community as it relates to the needs of the students. So um, let's look at um, the ASCA national model itself to see the way um, the, the structure of it um, in terms of the framework. So at the bottom, you'll notice if you're following along in your textbook, um, and you may use, it's also in your Erfurt textbook, or you may look at the model, the national model um, textbook, um, but you'll notice that uh, at the bottom of the, the diamond, I like to call it, is the, the defined um, element. And, and in the defined element, this means the school council has a responsibility of um, defining his or her um, school counseling program. Here, this defined component um, serves as the foundation um, of, of the program. And if there isn't a strong foundation, then the program's not going to be very successful. The program's going to crumble. So that it has to be strong. And how? what do you base that on? You gotta go back to, earlier I talked about those standards. So go back to looking at what are the expectation? What are the standards that ASCA has outlined as mindsets and behaviors that we expect that all students are gonna have as a result of participating in your school counseling program? So, so, so you have to look at student standards, look at the, the, um, which of those mindsets, which of those behaviors you're going to focus on. It'll be great to have all, all 35 of those, but the reality is that you're not going to be able to address all 35 within the year. But as a good measure, um, it's always good to include them all to say, um, we will address maybe um, 10 out of the 35 this year and next next year we will go with the other 10 and then the following year we will add those five that we haven't included and add five more or add um go back over the five of the 10 that we had done in the first year so you, you're thinking long term thinking systemically so as well as you you think um thinking long term uh in terms of the scope how wide you're going to reach and the sequence when those are actually going to happen. Um, so those are the student focus that as, as a school counselor, you want to look at and, 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 and focus on. And then included in that defined component, and I'm spending time talking about it because this is one of the assignments that you'll have to do for this class um, to really come up with your own um, your own comprehensive um, school counseling um, program and talk about what is what what that defined component of your um, comprehensive uh, program is going to entail. And so uh, student focus. And then the next is the professional standards. And those professional standards are going to come from um, what ASCA has developed as professional um, school counselor competencies. What are the competencies that you need to have as a school counselor to successfully um, create, successfully de um, design, successfully implement, su and successfully evaluate um, your program? So you need some skill sets in order for you to be successful in making sure that your comprehensive program actually um, takes place and is successful in meeting the needs of all students, every single student in your school. So that's the defined component. And if you're following along with me, you'll notice that in that defined component, you see 
two arrows that are pointing to the other two components that are side by side. And those other two components is the manage component on one side, and then you have the deliver component on the other side. So those two black arrows are going into those two components, meaning that the foundation is gonna feed into how you manage your program, and it's also gonna feed into how you deliver your program. They're connected, they're related. You can't manage your program if you don't have a strong foundation. In other words, you don't, if you don't know what you're managing, you can't manage it. You can't deliver your program if you don't know what you're delivering. And so that foundation is pretty much telling you what it is that you're going to um, be delivering. Um, so, 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 so that's really important um, that you're aware of that. Um, that define, going back to, to, to the define component, understand that the define component answered the question of what, the what of your comprehensive school counseling program. It makes it very clear what every student is expected to know and expected to be able to do as a result of being in your school counseling program hence the student standards. So this includes an emphasis on the school counseling program on the, your vision statement, you gotta have a vision statement, your mission statements, and of course your vision statement is gonna come um, or is gonna be based on what are the beliefs you have about how students change? So the school council beliefs, school council philosophy, what's valuable, what's important to you in your role as a school counselor is going to be based on the mission statement. Um, and then, of course, those ask of mindsets and behaviors and um, the professional competencies of the school counselor. All right. So through teamwork and collaboration, among stakeholders, you'll be able to construct a vision statement um, that's gonna guide your program. Your purpose and vision of your program, those you operationalize so that you can create or develop your mission statement. Your mission statement is gonna be why. Why do you exist? What's the purpose, all right? Uh, um, your vision statement is gonna help you um, determine what it is that you want to see? Where do you want to see your program going? Um, and then your program goals is going to address exactly what you plan to do, how you plan to accomplish the purpose, all related to your mission. All right. And then we talk, like I said, you have how you manage your component is right next to how you deliver your program. All right, so the deliver, the deliver program or the deliver component answers the question, how? How are you going? How are you going to get your comprehensive developmental school counseling program to your students? That's why it's the how. How is it going to be delivered? All right, so this includes as um, what, what's considered direct student services as well as indirect student services. Those direct services are frequently targeted um, students and they include attention to school counseling core curriculum. Those are the classroom guidance, a large group, individual student planning, your, and, and which, which usually the individual student planning has to do with what are some of the academic goals that they have. Um, think about in ninth grade, when the freshmen come in, they go through a plan. What are your plans, okay, in terms of what's going to be your pathway that you want to take and why, and how those may, pathways should be related to what they hope they're going, the career that they're going into. So individual student planning as w and how that's connected to if you're going to go to college or directly. And then the student responsive services. And those responsive services, like I mentioned earlier, those are the classroom, those are the Individual counseling student need to see you in response to something that they're going through. And the small group counseling um, as well is in response that students are going through. So those are your responsive services. Under your responsive services, you also have your crisis plan. So if a crisis occurred in the school, what plan do you have in place to take care of it, to address it? So you have your SIS. So systematic 
developmental classroom guidance, they come under your direct services. You've got parent workshops, direct services, that's related. You have individual and small group counseling, direct services that's related. Um, you have your crisis response, how you're gonna address any crisis, direct services. Your indirect services um, supports your direct services. That means you're aware of what's going on that you as a school counselor can meet, can address. And so anything that requires services beyond what you're able to give, but that you have somehow a connection to, those become your indirect services. And these are, um, and your indirect services, these can include any referrals that you have to make. Um, so if you notice that a student um, comes to you uh, or is sent to you by a teacher because the student has been cutting him or herself, um, or the student is making or showing some sort of indication that um, they're not in a good place right now and, and seem to want to um, inflict self-harm. And after meeting with the student, doing an assessment um, to see uh, the risk, uh, whether it's high or whether it's low in terms of whether um, the student um, hurting self, you may decide, mm, I think uh, I'm not ready to just tell the student he or she's okay and then go home. I think I need to make a referral to for the student to see um, a psychologist or a professional outside. So a pediatrician, um, psychologist, psychiatrist, those are your referrals, your indirect services. You're not directly involved, but you're indirectly involved. Any consultation in terms of parents saying, okay, this is going on at home, having a difficult time, can you assist me with this? You're meeting with the parents to give help on how to help the child, which is your student. So you're not giving the service directly to the student, you're giving it to the parent, that's consultation. And any type of other collaboration, meeting with teachers, meeting with administrators, meeting with um, the school social worker, to talk about services needed for the student. Um, those are your indirect services that comes under your deliver component. Your school counseling core curriculum provides services in a large format. And that's usually the, the, the easiest way uh, for the school counselor to be able to touch every single student in the school because the goal of the comprehensive program using the ASCA national model is that the school counselor is going to meet the needs of every single student in the school in some form or fashion. And so those large group of classroom guidance really help in a big way um, to meet the needs of the student. Um, and then you have your small groups as well um, that meet some of the needs but you're still meeting more than one instead of doing a bunch of individuals at a time. Classroom instructional units, um, they're not in, independent. Those are related and they must be linked to what's going on in the classroom. And when we get to that, we'll talk a little bit more uh, about those classroom guidance, parent workshops, um, the individual student planning um, that we talked about as well. And then your, um, the next one would be the manage system. All right, and, and, and notice that the manage is right next to your deliver. Those, those, in other words, they happen at the same time. At the bottom, it provides your foundation, is your define system. The two arrows leading from define goes to manage. And while you're managing your program, you're also delivering your program to the deliver. So the two arrows go, one from each part, go into each of those components. And what is your manage system? The manage system accounts for the when, the why, and on what or whose authority of the comprehensive program. So manage tells us when, your comprehensive program is going to happen or 
different aspects of your program will happen. Why you're doing this, why, why, why the delivery um, is taking place, because manage happens while it's being delivered. Why this particular direct service and not that one? Why this particular indirect service and not that one? And then it also includes on what or whose authority? In other words, you've got to have the backing of an administrator because um, the reality is the principal is king or queen in his or her school. The buck stops with the principal. So you can't do anything without the principal's blessing or principal's approval. Um, so you know, what authority um, that you're doing this? Um, school counselor um, competencies in terms of how do you manage, what, what's entailed, what's included in that manage um, program and that manage component. The program focus, what are you gonna focus on? And also the program planning. When are you gonna plan it? What are you gonna plan? So the program focus, what are you focusing on? And why are you focusing on this? And then the program planning. What are you, what's your planning? When is it gonna happen? And why is it happening at this particular time? So included in that manage those program focus, you have your school counselor competencies assessment. So if you're saying in your um, defined section that these are the competencies that you're expected to have and that you will have to be able to effectively um, manage and deliver your uh, comprehensive um, program, then it has to be assessed. It has to be determined whether you have those or not. And if you don't, when are you gonna get them? So the school counselor competencies will be included. Then you have the school counseling program assessment. If you're saying that this is what you're giving, then you have to be able to assess whether you've done it and how well did you do it? So those assessment needs will be under the manage and who's gonna assess them? When is they, When will they, these assessments take place? Use of time, how are you using your time? If you're saying you have to give all of these and you cannot be at this particular place because you're doing this particular um, responsibility, then it has to be included in your use of time to make sure that your time is used wisely. When we get to chapter three, I'm gonna talk about what are some of the issues that are pushing school. And you're gonna find that accountability is huge. And so the use of the time answers that question in terms of um, school counselors' accountability um, within the school. And then the agreement on whose authority that you're doing this. And so you've got to have some agreements set in place to say, I have met with the school, I've met with my principal, I've established a um, school counseling advisory board that's gonna help me, that's not only gonna help me, but that bless what I have to do, approve what I've done, what I'm supposed to do, <clears throat> and uh, are behind me, are supporting this 100%. So um, what are those agreements that you have? Identify your advisory um, boards or your advisory council, why? When do they meet? What's the purpose of the meeting? How you use the data? Your annual results? Any action plans that you have? How, when those are gonna be done? Remember when are you gonna put these? So you have to identify what is the action plan? And it has to have a time limit. When will they take place? And why do you need these action plans? Um, lesson plans. You have to be able to, because you gotta deliver something. So. If you're going to classroom to do large group of classroom guidance or core curriculum, you got to have a plan in place. And so your managed system says, yeah, I got my plan and this is when I'm going to do it. This is when I'm going to do it. Your deliver says, here's the plan and you go and you do it or you have it done, depending on how you are getting it, what's happening. But you have to be able to identify that those are there in your managed system. They have to show up. In other words, you gotta have a calendar. You get, you must include it. So your, your, your calendar is gonna address how you use your time. Your calendar is also gonna address 
um, your action plans that you actually have in cal calendar is going to address when you do these when are you doing these services um, so so that's your management um, system that you need to have in place those annual agreements are very important I've, uh, I've, I've kind of talked about that already um, look thoroughly through chapter two read it so that you can find what each of those entail um, and even in, my, in, in the notes the lecture notes that I have I have the scriptures of each of those um, that you would have including the school advisory board the school advisory um, uh, your school advisory um, board that you have all right and then as we go to um, the last component which is your um, accountability um, or assess your assess system it used to be called the accountability system um, and assess simply means what you're gonna do how are you gonna determine your effectiveness get it how are you going to assess your program? How are you going to assess what it is that you're doing? So there has to be some assessment for you as a school counselor as well. So an assessment for the program is going to include program assessment as well as the school counselor assessment um, and any, any, any sort of evaluation that's done. And so your assess program or component answers that all important question how a student's different as a result of being exposed or as a result of participating in your comprehensive developmental school counseling program. How are students, how have they changed? So you have to be able to show that. And the best way to show that is through data. Data paints a picture. Data paints a realistic picture. Data, data can also paint a true picture. So data is important. That answers the question. Here's how my students have changed. I can show you because your assess component must be addressed. And again, if you look at that diamond, you will notice that your manage has an arrow that's going to the assess and that your deliver has an arrow that's also feeding to the assess. So how you deliver your program while you're managing it at the same time should be able to be assessed, which means that these are gonna feed into your overall assessment of the program. And if you look at your assess up at the top component you notice that there's a huge arrow that goes directly down straight into your define component meaning that when you when you do the assessment of your program it should point back to what you say students are going to be able to accomplish what are those students standards the mindsets and behaviors that you said that you're going to address. What are those competencies that you say that you will need to have as a school counselor to be able to deliver this? What's your mission? Should it, those assessments should say, yeah, my students were able to accomplish these goals that I had set out in my defined component. So you're gonna look at the results of your program. So you're gonna to have to have program evaluation, program assessment, and those program assessment can come from um, the actual program where students actually do an assessment of how effective or felt whether they've learned or didn't, or, did, or show whether they've, they've actually accomplished anything or not. The program assessment could also come from um, teachers, could also come from parents, can come from community members, depends on how you set it up um, and what the program was that you implemented. Um, and then look at school counselor um, assessment of self, school counselor's assessment of effectiveness with the program. And so those, the results of the, your assessment will answer the question, how are students different as a result?
of participating in my program. And that is the Ask a National model um, and how that is actually operationalized into a comprehensive school counseling program that is developmental in nature, but also comprehensive in scope. So remember, if you are going to work to meet the needs of every single student in your school, then your program is gonna have to be comprehensive. That means all aspects that's related to their academic development, related to their career development, related to their social emotional development. And at the same time, it has to be developmental. Why? If you're at the elementary school, what your preschoolers and kindergartners are expected to do is gonna look very different from what your fourth and fifth graders will. So it's the same in the middle school. Sixth graders are gonna look different from eighth graders. And also in the high school, ninth graders are gonna look very different from 12th graders, the expectation um, and the results. So, so it has to be comprehensive and at the same time, developmental in nature. So thoroughly read chapter two, look at the notes and you should have everything that you need to understand the basis of developing, implementing, how essential it is for the school counselor to have a comprehensive developmental school counseling program based on the Ask a National Model.